If you like the Superman Batman dichotomy, then this book is definitely for you because it was damn sure definitely for me. My name is Dorian. This is SEM Comics, and we are covering the complete Superman and Batman World Finest series. And today we're doing Superman Batman number nine. So it starts off with Superman and Batman inspecting Kara's spaceship and Batman is reading the translation that was put into her spaceship. It's like a message to whoever finds her. It says, this vessel carries my daughter Kara Zorro from the now dead planet of Krypton. Treat her as you would your own child for you will see the treasure she will be for your world. Batman immediately goes, do you think we translated the word treasure properly? <laughs> And then it's so funny because Superman is about to lose his sh He goes for the 14th time. Yes, it means treasure, not terror, not trouble. And then Superman's like, what's wrong with you just accepting her? And Batman is on it. He goes, you can start with, I find a little bit convenient how she got here. And then he goes, and if we are to accept how she got here is true. Then you realize Luthor wasn't insane, that the navigational system aboard this craft was bringing the asteroid straight to Earth, and specifically to you. And then Superman's like, but Luthor couldn't have known that. And then Batman's on it again. He's like, but Darkseid would. And then Superman has a switch. Batman's like, what did you do? And Superman's like, it feels like sunlight. Well, that explains how her powers manifested so quickly. <laughs> and then again, Batman's like, how convenient and then all of a sudden all you hear is supergirl start to scream and she's like let me in it's after me and then she just beats in the door she's running towards batman and superman and she goes i didn't do anything to it i swear and superman's like calm down has there been a breach in the forces of solitude what's after you and she's like that <laughs> and it's crypto so superman has to get in between them He's telling Crypto to get down. <laughs> Crypto is on one because he's trying to use his heat vision on her, which kind of explains the last video that we did. Check out Superman Batman number eight. Find out what he does with that heat vision. And then Superman's like, bad dog. We need to leave Kara alone. She's our friend. And then Kara's trying to explain herself. Like, oh, I tried to be his friend. And, and Batman is like on it. He's like, enough. <laughs> you need to go to your quarters. And we'll talk about this later. Now, in Kara's offense, Batman is talking to her like she's a child. Put yourself in her shoes. If you had all these godlike abilities, are you gonna be sitting there letting some ordinary dude just tell you what to do? I don't think so. So Superman and Batman are talking, and then Batman's like, doesn't it bother you that the dog hates her? Now, there is no love loss between Crypto and Batman. So for them to agree, you know something's gotta be up. But again, Superman goes right to the defensive, and he's like, well, when he's here, Crypto's job is to protect the forces. And besides, Crypto hates everybody. So then Kara's in Superman's intergalactic zoo. And then she goes, you can try that boogeyman stuff on somebody else. I can hear your heartbeat from 40 yards off. And she's like, why can't you just leave me alone? You'll never understand what it's like to be me. <laughs> And then Batman's like, well, why don't you just keep explaining it until I do? So this is why Ra's al Ghul calls Batman a detective because he is questioning everything Kara is saying. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you every detail because I'll pretty much make this a 10 minute video. In a nutshell, she's saying how her father was also a scientist, but not at the level of Superman's father. And her father was the only one that believed Superman's father so he also created a spaceship but hers really never made it off the planet as it was going the planet exploded and that's how the spaceship got stuck to the asteroid and then Batman's like do you remember your mother's name and then Kara's like you know I don't why don't you trust me and then Batman's like cold as ice because you desperately want me to and then Superman's like enough I think she's ready and Batman's like I don't think so and Superman's like ready for what cow so now it switches to Apocalypse and you got Granny Goodness trying to find a replacement for Big Bartha. Big Bartha was a leader of the Furies who are a bunch of female warriors who serve Darkseid. Now Big Bartha didn't die, she actually switched sides and now she lives on Earth with Scott Free. If you don't know who Big Bartha and Scott Free is, we'll actually break those characters down. But right now we just need to keep the story going. And she puts on a brave face, but this girl gets decimated by the Furies. <laughs> and Granny Goodness was like, huh, oh, she shows so much potential. Dark side is just pissed. He's like, you need to find a replacement for Big Barter. If you don't, 
then the next person that the Furies are going to decimate is you. So now it switches back to Earth and we are now in Metropolis and Superman is taking care of Zarel shopping. And Superman goes, I guess, shopping and being a female is a universal thing because it sure as hell didn't take you long to get the hang of it. And Kara is explaining how she prefers Metropolis over Gotham City. And there goes that dichotomy again. Metropolis is the light, while Gotham City is the dark. And of course, you know our paranoid detective is following them in. Superman knows that Batman is following them. So then Kara goes, so why do you wear glasses? And then Superman goes, it helps to protect my identity so my loved ones don't get harmed by all my enemies. And then Kara is just puzzled how a pair of glasses can change somebody's identity like that. And then she walks over to the Superman statue and then she realizes how the reason why the glasses work is because nobody expects Superman to be amongst them because they put him in such high regard. And then both Superman and Batman at the same time realize that somebody's coming. All of a sudden, Superman gets hit. Next thing you know, Kara has a rope wrapped around her. She tries to fly off, but then she gets pulled back, more like a lasso, so I think we know who this is. So Superman is now changed into his outfit. He flies in trying to help Kara, but he's getting hit in all directions, and then all of a sudden you realize that he is surrounded. And now Batman is changed into his outfit, and the first thing he says is, <laughs> I hate Metropolis. I got too many trees around here. Then you see an arrow flying at Batman and Batman sends a battering that not only breaks the arrow, but also goes and breaks the bow of the person who shot the arrow. And then Batman goes, that worked. I gotta thank Ollie the next time I see him. So now Superman's pissed and he spins around and he knocks all the girls that surrounding him out. So now Batman jumps down on the person who shot the arrow and we find out that it's Artemis. Now Artemis has the same powers and abilities as Wonder Woman. She's not on the same level, but she's also not that far off either. So there shouldn't be a fight that Batman can win. And when it starts off, Artemis jumps all over Batman, but then Batman buzzes out syringe, sticks in her neck, and reminds everybody why he is a Dark Knight. So now Kara is starting to get worried because she's wondering who the hell is strong enough to drag her like this. And she buzzes out of heat vision, and it just gets deflected, and then she gets snatched up. <laughs> and then Superman goes, you. And let me just say, this last panel, Michael Turner is the artist. Hello, Hammers. The Lord is my shepherd. He know what I want. <laughs> 